Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect, thanks so much. Excellent, thank you, Marty. And I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to speak here and thanks everyone for attending. Um, real quick background on myself. My name is Mark Jensen. I'm the CEO and chairman and co-founder and the largest investor in American Resources Corporation. We're a NASDAQ listed public company um, focusing predominantly on supplying raw materials to the infrastructure market. A little bit about my background. Born and raised in the Midwest, went to Indiana University, moved out to New York to do turnaround consulting and M&A. Um, so during the first course of my business career, I invested and have either invested or raised over $500 million for various businesses across the landscape. So we haven't been focused on any one industry, but across the board, looking at basically the problems that most businesses face. And really enjoyed this panel and this, the, the various panels here just because you can really align and look at the different industries and how they're impacted by different events taking place throughout the world. And, and more importantly, you recognize how certain events affect different businesses in different ways, but also sometimes the same ways being completely different industries. Um, one thing that we've seen through COVID is change and the advancement of change and is gonna to continue to advance at, I think faster levels than we would have seen without this, this crazy disruption to our economy. And it's gonna to continue to transform economies in a faster, more advanced way. What we've seen is the alternative energy market. Um, given the area where I operate, so American Resources, we focus on acquiring mining complexes in Eastern Kentucky and West Virginia. So that central Appalachian market. And I've been there for 12 years, sold my first company for 15 million, um, when we got into it in 2006, uh, exited in 2009, did a couple different consulting turnaround projects, and then started American Resources in 2015, predominantly buying assets from bankrupt companies and restructuring, uh, taking those assets and focusing on maximizing the value from all of the assets, not just predominantly what this old stodgy industry has typically done. So we're known as a disruptor in the industry because we look at things differently. And where we see the opportunity and what's been presented to us is the ability to transform how the world receives product and, and produces product. In the mining industry, we have been blessed with a high, a high degree and high concentration of various heavy rare earth oxides that are present in the materials that have been mined historically from coal mining. And this is developed not from my company specifically, but over the last 15 years, it's been developed by the scientific community in our region. Following the leads of the scientific community, we've seen a huge need and increase for heavy rare earth oxides due to the transformation of what's taking place worldwide. You see electric vehicles ramping up dramatically. I mean, Tesla has done amazingly well, but beyond Tesla, you're seeing it from every major car manufacturer, the transforming and building out electric vehicles where they started a few, 10 years back, they kind of idled down and then Tesla took the lead and has really developed a market for it and proven the concept where now you're seeing it from every single manufacturer. As Marty said, heavy rare earths, are predominantly almost exclusively manufactured in either China or Southeast Asia. Um, the unique thing about it is they are extracted via, via very invasive processes and very invasive methods and controlled by countries that ultimately typically have dictated what the price is for those for the underlying commodity itself, which ultimately will drive up the prices for electric vehicles, alternative, alternative energy, and all the other different mechanisms. What we've seen and what we've been focusing on is developing a method to extract rare earths commercially. Now, there's rare earths present throughout the entire world and, and especially in the United States, rare earths are not rare. Uh, what is rare about them and what is rare about critical elements is being able to extract them economically and commercially and actually be able to make money doing it. What my company has been focused on is the last three years of testing our various sites and doing it in a way that we can extract and concentrate the rares to produce them in an economically feasible manner, working with the scientific community, more specifically with the various universities that have led the research on how to not only concentrate, but also separate those rares, doing it domestically here. So what you'll see is in the United States today, there's basically one major region that, had, that actually produces heavy rare earth oxides. There's only one producing company in the entire country of the United States that can actually produce and process rare earths. And that's MP Materials got bought for $1.5 billion by a SPAC earlier this year. Um, and they produce, uh, instead of producing heavy rare earth oxides, they produce light rare earth oxides. What my region of the world is, is known for is having heavy rare earth oxides, but in low concentrations. And so what we've been focusing on is developing a process to increase the concentrations from the, the methods of extraction of what we do it through. 
And typically that's through what we call AMD ponds, acid mine drainage ponds, which are naturally occurring events from formerly producing mines, more specifically coal mines, that possess these, these different elements and are able to then, what we've been able to do is then develop a process to extract them and then concentrate them to a point where they can actually be economical. Today, we can sell those into the overseas market, but what we're very quickly here in the, in the and what we've announced in the last couple of weeks is the ability to develop a processing facility within the central Appalachian market to be a consolidator of the various rare earths that are present and also explain to people on how the concentration actually takes place by using various methods of solvents and various methods of, of adding acidity to the different water sources that can then help pull forward this environmental remediation as well. So anybody that knows anything about mining, acid mine drainage is not a good thing at least hasn't been historically. It's known as the sites that no mining company actually wants. What we've been able to do is go around and test our various sites, which we have over 30 today that we've been testing, as well as other sites that other people possess, which is where you have to take these acid mine drainage ponds and, and before you, you discharge into the waterways, you have to clean them up by adding different treatments and different chemicals. What we're doing is re we're redesigning how that whole thing works. And so if you think about different innovations and different disruptions, we're taking the worst parts of the coal mining industry and, and not only developing a way to concentrate heavy rare earths, but we're also finding a way to pull forward that environmental remediation so that those waters and those acid mine drainage ponds don't exist 20 to 30 years from now, exist for 100 years. So what we, we, what we will be talking about and what we will be doing in the next year or in the next two years is we're going to be showcasing how the the scientific community has developed a process that we are licensing and we are working with, and as well as utilizing our own internal processes and, and our own procedures that we've developed to be able to take those concentrates and bring them to a commercial stage and then build a processing facility here domestically where we can consolidate and we can actually distribute that product here domestically to the electric motor market. Um, I don't see the electric motor market declining anytime soon. And more importantly, the need for environmental remediation, regardless of what candidate wins in the near time election, we need to clean up the environment. We need to do our part, especially the coal mining community and taking the ability to completely disrupt how the, the critical elements market works today is an opportunity that's present in, in the community that we operate, which is also a socially distressed community. So from a ESG perspective, we're able to hit and, and actually provide jobs for this community in, in a new industry, utilizing the waste product that was produced from coal mining and then concentrate it, bring it to a level that can be commercialized through the processing facilities today. Um, I'll share one quick screen here that talks a little bit about what's taking place within uh, across, really across the world of what we're seeing. But the ability to, as I mentioned, to extract, if you go down to Florida today, there's, there's heavy, there's, or not heavy rares, but there's rare earths present all throughout the beaches and all throughout the sands and all throughout the country but can you commercially extract it without the thorium base and without the radiation that's present all throughout the world? That's where we see the opportunity to utilize what's present in our area to, to basically capitalize on that. Um, the one thing I, I'll talk about and, and what, talk about with China, the demand that we see here domestically, and I'll, and I'll break off here shortly just in case there is any questions, but we're seeing over a 10% growth rate for the electric motor market. That means the, the demand for raw materials that's already being somewhat suppressed and or being threatened of shutting off from China is going to be ever more present and ever greater. The price of the raw materials is going to continue to expand, but we believe we can make it profitable based on today's market. The future expansion and the future growth of that's going to be even more, more beneficial, let alone the fact that we'll be the only region in the world that can extract heavy rares in an environmentally sensitive way and do it on a, an increasing scale as there's more folks being present in it. Um, I'll take a break here and see if there is any questions. I think across the chat, there might, might've been a few that have come across, but I didn't know if Marty, if you wanted to handle that, or if you want me to read across it. Uh, I, I don't have any questions yet on, on chat, but you know, again, um, do you think that Biden will be different than Trump in terms of these rare earths production in, um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? What, what do you hear through the grapevine? Obviously you, you've got a, uh, stake in the game. Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be, um, I think there's absolutely difference of opinion on how they're going to manage the China relationship. But at the end of the day, 
I, I don't. I, I think even if China doesn't shut off their supply of, of rare earths, they're already looking for additional heavy rare earth oxide deposits to to capitalize on due to their own supply. Um, the the need for the underlying commodity is going to ever grow. We're we're ch we're changing how the vehicle market operates today, and the demand is going to continue to decline. I think I think Biden's going to be weaker on China than than Trump is. I think Biden also is more focused on the environmental sensitivity than Trump is as well. So from from our perspective, they from our own business and, and the demand of the market, I think there's there's going to be a need for that, and there, there's going to be a need for the product, and there's going to be an ever growing demand. I think if if we if they stay hard on Trump, if they if Trump stays hard on um, on China, and the electric market motor market continues to grow, it's kind of a, I mean, there's, that's a double fold gain for us, but nonetheless, I think also the, the Tesla's and the, the underlying motor market, the, the electric vehicle market is going to start looking at where they get their supply from and looking at the regions of where it's extracted from. And from an environmental aspect, if you go to these places where they're leaching out material in China or Malaysia and some of these other regions where heavy rare earth oxides are produced, they're going to start getting their hands slapped for that. And you're not going to be viewed as an environmentally sensitive company if you're buying something that's completely polluting the earth on the other side. What, what other strategic industries are under besides the, the auto industry? Yeah, I mean, from I mean, you think about any any electric motor that turns at a fast rate. So if you're if you're using like the electric motor market or the windmill market or any of the markets that use these electric motors, the, the dysprosium is one of the heavy rare earth oxides that is not overly present a lot throughout the world. But what that does, it, it, it takes a very high heat rate. So it, it absorbs the, the heat so that you can actually have the motor without burning up. And, and there's a much more scientific way to describe it than what I just did. But um, any, any electric motor market is using it, let alone, I mean, you talk about critical elements of lithium and cobalt within the battery manufacturing. But when you're producing, people talk about rares, but really it comes down to critical elements. And in those critical elements, the need for cobalt, the need for lithium, let alone dysprosium and and uh, neodymium and all the other uh, heavy rares that are out there today, what they're used for is basically, I mean, think anything alternative in that degree or anything electric motor that we're using today. And what's your location for this processing plant? Yeah, we're looking at, so we've got a site selection of three different locations. Predominantly, we own today as a company over 16, we control over 16,000 surface acres, 30,000 mineral acres. So we're looking at building it within the Eastern Kentucky, West Virginia border given the certain coal seams, the Catanning seam, the Elkhorn 3 seam, the, these coal seams have, with, if they have a high degree of pyrite, they typically have a high degree of heavy rare, rare earth. So we're trying to build right in the heartland of that within a 150 mile radius of where the major deposits we're focusing on are. And you, and you have a cleaner way of extraction. So we're actually cleaning up the environment through the extraction. Acid mine drainage is basically what acid mine drainage is, is it's water coming either through the old coal refuse that's been extracted and processed and washed that's stored on the hill, or it's acid mine drainage that are coming out of old mine works. And what that is, is it's low pH water effectively. And what that low pH water does is it releases the different elements. And so we're able to actually capture the water, put it through a series of settlement ponds to strip out the heavy rares, but by doing so, in that settlement process and the, the, the process we use, sodium hydroxate and the other different chemicals, and I may be mispronunciating them, but they, uh, what that does is it helps these, these irons and the metals settle out in that seven stage process. And through that process, you're actually cleaning up the environment. So when the water- So, so you're saying that there's, con there's continuing environmental damage from existing mines and damage it did in the past and that your process will clean all that up. Yeah, we've trademarked a term called advanced AMD. So what we have today, I mean, I own over 42 mining permits. So we mine metallurgical carbon for steel production. I also recycle existing metal for steel production, which we sell to Nucor. And then my third business line is our critical elements division. Through the acquisition, I've, I've acquired over $370 million of assets from various bankrupt coal mining companies. And what happens is they have these old coal storage facilities, these old processing facilities that store the waste rock that they produce. And what happens is that water comes out into ponds, in that pond you have to treat and settle. Otherwise, what you're gonna be putting into the water is iron, iron water, acid mine water, really low pH water that kills the fish and everything else. What we do is we create the settlement pond structure and then what we do on top of it is we actually expedite the reclamation. We actually expedite the negative particulates that are coming out of the water and pull that reclamation forward. But by doing it, we capture it. And by capturing it, we can reuse it and then process it for the critical elements 
but in the same stage, we're actually treating the water. So when we discharge it, it's clean water. And, but instead of having that water be polluted for the next hundred years, if nobody did anything, we can pull that forward for anywhere from 15 to 30 years where we're actually monetizing the actual materials that come out. Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously it's, it's actually, it's an entrepreneurial task that uh, does include the same time. So that's always fascinating. Um, so Mark